Good evening. Welcome to Hebron, city of the forefathers, the patriarchs. It's Motzi Shabbat, Parshat Chukat. I'm Avram Shira. We're here with a Saturday night Zohar. We saw this little piece of Zohar today at lunch, you know, and I said, this has got to be taken out into the world. When Sarah met Chava, right now, wait a minute, weren't they a couple of 1,500, 2,000 years apart? Well, they were. But remember, the Zohar is speaking from above time and space. The Zohar is a continuous movie of the soul and many souls operating throughout time, above time, and in many different spaces, oftentimes at once. And you know, when you hear this story, you're going to find it's really hard to believe, perhaps, if you merit to have the kind of simple faith that some Jews have that it might not be so hard to believe. But if you compare it to what people believe nowadays, it's not so hard anymore. And yet we're relying on something else. We're not relying on the media. We're not relying on the press conference. We're not relying on the, you know, big communications companies. We're relying on the divine inspiration of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his students. And those Tanaim Kedoshim, those holy rabbis, who gave their lives for the Torah and for the Jewish people. So I don't know who you want to give your life for, but uh, maybe nobody. But, you know, when you come and you hear this story, you compare it to the things that are in the news, then you're going to say, well, you know, maybe I need to recalibrate <laughs> my faith. So what happens is when Sarah Imenu passed away, of course, Abraham, Avram Avinu, brought her here to bury her in a cave. Now, there wasn't this big building built by Hortus, and there wasn't this uh, huge city that's around us, but rather, it was a field, right? And Ephron the Hittite, the Hittites were a, a Mediterranean basin tribe that stretched from Egypt all the way up into Turkey, all along the coastline, and they were known for worshiping snakes, if you're interested, because there were many different kinds of cults. One of them was a snake cult, and so they lived here in Hebron, and it's very interesting if you think about it. Why would God have the greatest patriarch, uh, prophet of his time, bury his beloved holy wife in a field in the midst of a snake-worshipping cult? Something odd. But we're told in the Midrash, and the Zohar brings down Midrashim, and we're told that Abraham was going to make a festive, a meal for, for the angels that came to visit him. And he came running after an animal that had escaped or run away. And, and the animal led him to this cave. And he saw a light coming from the cave. And he smelled a scent that was peculiarly beautiful and enchanting. And he said, this is a special place. And to this day, we hold that it is one of the portals, the portals of Gan Eden. Okay, so now, back to our story. Sarah is brought here to be buried. Now, this is a dead body, right? You put the dead body in the cave, and they say their prayers, and they leave. But the Zohar picks it up where Sarah is already out of her body. And she is going into the cave where Chava, right, the mother of all life, the first human mother that had divine speech and communication and prophecy with God. She and her husband, Adam, were buried here. Now, they weren't dead, right? There's no such thing as death to the holy spark of the soul. It just, it does better outside the body because the body, well, the body is the body. And so Sarah is ushered in glowing with light. And Chava and Adam get up from where they're resting in the cave. And they say, we have to leave. We can't bear being around you. You shame us with your holiness. Do you hear this? Chava, the first woman who went through so much to start a family, is telling Sarah, who went through quite a bit to, <laughs> to start her family, She's telling you, your holiness is so great, I can't bear being around it. 
it reminds us of our sins. Now, Hava and Adam bore a particular burden, and that burden was bringing death into the world. See, because death is a created thing. When you're with Hashem in, in God's world, not the created world he created for man, but when you're in his world, there is no death because he's all life, continuous life, everlasting. So, well, when Hava and Adam ate from the tree of the duality of knowledge, right? To call it fruit, but it's really a duality of knowledge that created a, you and me, us and them, as opposed to just us, one being, one living being, one sentient universe, with God as the director, the creator, the animator, the stage director, the designer, <laughs> the costumes as well. And so all of that was one. But when they ate, they, the entire creation fell, and it fell into physicality. Okay, so here we are. Hava and Adam are in their cave. They've been alone for quite a while. And Sarah shows up with her light. The light of all her good deeds was so great, they couldn't bear to be around it because they were showing them up now. If you've ever been by a particularly holy person, they shine to the degree that they shine ourselves back to ourselves. They're like a mirror. And I walked into the room of the Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1991. I understood. <laughs> I understood what they meant by that teaching. Because this man shined with light. And, but it was interesting because I didn't feel ashamed of my sins. And there were a few of those around. Rather, I felt his love overpowered the shame of who I had been in my previous lifetime, shall we say. And so, you know, there are levels of holiness, and there's one level where, where a tzaddik, a righteous person, will shine, or a tzaddik is like Sarah, will shine you back to you. And then there's a level where their love so overwhelms the vessel that all you feel is their love and appreciation for you as a human being. And so, well, Sarah came in and didn't realize when you have that kind of light, it's not like you can just turn it up and down, <laughs> unless you frown, I guess, you know. But it, you shine whether you know it or not. As Moses came down from the mountain with the two ta tablets of the Ten Commandments, and he was shining, this says, Karen Ora Panav, he had these, these beams of light coming out of his forehead, and, and everybody else was terrified of him, and he didn't know what was the problem until he understood, and then he covered himself with a little veil. But that's the nature of holiness, is that holiness doesn't make you some kind of uh, astronaut of spirituality. It makes you the most grounded, real person that you can be. And your joy is what shines out, and your love, and your peace, and your quality of life, and your righteousness. So anyways, Sarah brought in her light into the cave, and Adam and Eve were still suffering from the shame of bringing death into the world. And that's a hard thing to bear. We're talking about millions and millions and millions of souls. That they understood that that was the beginning of a whole new cycle of creation. That they had had a very, <laughs> a very upper hand in creating. So Abraham came in after. And Abraham said, don't let our light shame you, we will pray for you. And we will pray that you will no longer feel the shame of the past. And so it was. Abraham prayed for them. God removed their shame. Now, wait a second here. Let's ask a question. God removed their shame. But isn't shame something that we own? Well, maybe it's something that's shined to us based on who we've been. Rabbi Nachman teaches like this, that if a person merits, merits, he will feel the pain of his sins in the place where they originate, in the roots of creation. When we do things against God's will, we, we snip the roots. Now, the tree wilts afterwards. And so it is a merit to get to the level that you can even feel 
the pain of your own disconnection. So you shouldn't have to feel it again. But we've all felt it. And, you know, I'm here because I felt it. And I said, I don't want to feel this anymore. I want to feel the joy and the love and the peace and all the other good things in life. But sometimes we have to go through those barriers. Sometimes we have to go through the shame that Adam and Eve felt in the presence of the tzedekah Sarah, who had never sinned, who was a pure soul from the beginning of her story. And that's one of the reasons why Abraham and Sarah came after Adam and Chava, because God said, Adam and Chava have a huge test. And if they fail, I'll have Ab Abraham and Sarah will come up behind them and pick up the, the pieces and, and fix creation. And that's what she did, because Adam and Chava caused the divine presence to ascend from this plane. And Abraham and Sarah, by their good deeds, by hosting people, by making blessings, by giving blessings, by putting themselves out for others, they brought the divine presence back into the world. And that's really the light that Chava felt in the first place. So they, Adam and Eve had their shame removed by Abraham's prayer. God took it away. And, and this is a level of, of cleansing. Now, King David said, Hatati right? My sin is before me all day long. He does not forget King David, his sins. And we are advised never to forget them because they remind us how frail, how uh, tenuous our existence is, how much we are really on a tightrope between the good and the evil and the holy and the unholy. And that tightrope is a tough walk. And we don't want to forget and get lightheaded <laughs> how far the fall is below that <laughs> cavern. So we should all be blessed with a holy week, with a happy week, with a new week, with a new beginning. Because that's what Motzi Shabbat is, the new beginning. And we get a new, a, a new piece of soul to serve Hashem with. And God is new too. And God doesn't sit you know, in his memory bank, checking us out on purpose, you know. That, that happens on Rosh Hashanah, the Day of Judgment, once a year. God is always looking for our good. And all we got to do is add to it. And it grows and it grows and it gets better and it's better until your light becomes so great that other people see there's something about you. And that light actually helps them become themselves at a deeper, truer way. And so too... The light of Hashem is spread in the world to the Jewish people, to the, the keeping of Torah and mitzvot, and into the greater world beyond. Shavuot Tov. Have a great week. We'll see you on all the platforms.